Today, the UBX has over 200 financial institutions and thousands of agents in our ecosystem. We built award-winning and globally recognized agnostic, open, and interoperable platforms that serve as the future backbone of open finance in the Philippines. The number of business customers grew 184 times in the last three years, and to date we have over 230,000 B2B customers that serve millions of their own customers daily. So our transaction volume grew 383 times since our incorporation in 2019, with over a billion US dollars in gross transactional volumes. Our banking platform has grown its transactions to 132% uh, or roughly 5.4x growth in the last three years. And it connects its customers to hundreds of financial institutions and communities such as rural banks and remittance centers with over 10,000 touch points all over the country. Our payments platform, and this is a great story, has been scaling greatly with over 50 million transactions or 440x growth and uh, an underbox, which is the name of our payments platform. We've signed about 100,000 merchants and they're utilizing all of these 50,000 cash incomes or cash out channels. Our lending platform has registered over 48,000 MSMEs and processed over $300 million worth of business loans and has shown a 14x growth since our launch in 2019. Our banking platform called i to i that's letter I, number two and I, was actually launched here at the Singapore FinTech Festival in 2019, has grown its transactions 132% or another 5.4x growth over the past few years as it connects its customers to hundreds of financial institutions as community-focused rural banks, remittance centers nationwide, using over 10,000 touch points to make their transactions. It's blockchain-based, but not only services central bank financial institutions, but enterprise and retail level uh, merchants, uh, such as hardware stores, uh, bakeries, even water refilling stations that allow these institutions to conduct financial transactions using their cash in bank as to support these financial cash out transactions, such as mobile ATMs. Our payment platform, as I mentioned, called Bux, has signed up about 100,000 merchants and has over 60,000 cash in cash, cash out access points through 30 payment partner channels, covering about 99% of all the payment channels required by all of our merchants. Bux, again, has been scaling greatly over the last few years at over 50 million transactions or a 440x growth. We have a lending platform called CCAP for C capitalization. It has registered over 48,000 MSMEs, that's medium, small, and micro enterprises, and has processed over $300 million worth of business loans, showing a 14x growth. During the pandemic, CCAP was fundamental in playing a huge role in MSME recovery by allowing single application approval and disbursement, by eliminating submission of physical documents and personal appearance at the bank. Now let's move on to the second story, which is about our communities. So before I flew in to Singapore, I came from a, one of our bigger islands called Mindanao, and that's the southernmost part of the Philippines, to visit a client called KMBI. KMBI. KMBI is a microfinance NGO that's focused on have, helping women entrepreneurs access loans, access insurance, and help in capital buildup. KMBI supports about 157,000 women that equates to about 157,000 families in the Philippines. The initial use case was fairly standard. Before UBX came into the picture to take women borrowers, mostly mothers, we call them nanais, uh, and they, it took them up to two hours to go to the nearest town to pay for their group loans. And, um, or as much as uh, everyone would contribute to the money it took for that one person making that payment to go to the city centers. So, you know, when we implemented this box, the solution that we call box, with, all, with these over 60,000 pay-in, cash-out, cash-in channels, it reduced the time 
which took away the time they were using to travel. It gave them more time for their business. It gave them more time for their families. But it also halved the transportation costs, which means there was a financial implication to this as well. But in, in this particular case, and this is where it gets interesting, in this particular case, it wasn't just time or savings. We noticed that there was a particular use case in a particular area where there was an unexpected peak in usage of these cash in, cash out services. So we took the time to figure out why. And what we found out that it wasn't the pandemic, it, it wasn't a storm, it wasn't some kind of physical limitation on, on themselves and how they could make the payments, but rather there was a very peculiar kind of, how do you say, social dispute that would oftentimes turn violent. So this violence either prevented people from this area from leaving their houses completely, or at the very least, even if it allowed them to travel, prevented them from traveling long distances, just because it was more dangerous to travel at the time. So our solution became less of a convenience and cost solution, but rather a physical safety and security solution. And that's not common in the Philippines at all. But at the very least, it's really up, it shows that it's really up to the consumer to define how they use the technology. What you can hope for is you have a standard set of use cases, and then they find a way to make it useful to them. So what's next for, uh, what's next for UBX? So we went from engaging individual customers to engaging institutions that had a lot of customers. We went the direction of engaging through communities. And we've seen powerful results, not just from a business perspective, but in the KMBI case, a very strong social perspective as well. Continuing the market acquisition through community engagement strategy in the last half of 2022, uh, UBX has begun engaging the biggest community at all, of all, the Philippine government. And this is going to be a big one. Change here is more difficult than change anywhere else. In June 2021, the Banco Central de Filipinas released the new guidelines for an open set of solutions of services, where UBX is perfectly positioned to support the open finance framework. The UBX platform not only engaged central bank, supervised entities, but all sorts of entities, including retail, both formal and formal, which means you can have high-end retail to wet market vendors. We also support gig economy workers by bringing them into our ecosystems, these point solutions that we develop, not just giving them a digital identity, which is fundamental to dealing to, to an open finance framework, but we also collect and manage their transactions for them, which again are fundamental for digital inclusion. Also, last July 2022, we started a project called Kasama Lahat, which literally means include everyone with the Philippine Post Office. The Philippine Post Office is perfectly situated to be the end points of an open finance play, just because it has distributed all of the national IDs of the Philippines, the new national ID, as well as 60% of its 4,000 endpoints going into missionary routes, which means when you talk about digital inclusion, you're not just talking about targeting urban areas, but making sure you're targeting the furthest points possible. Finally, some UBX tech stuff, and I'll, tech stuff, and I'll make this really quick. The UBX is building an API uh, library or gateway, which is called Expanse, that will allow any entity that is technologically capable to integrate with each other, those within the ecosystem, as well as Expanse will, uh, will allow third-party service providers and platforms to interoperate with the networks we've already built with the Philippine Postal Service. The second part is to equip every Filipino with a uh, open app. All the Filipinos that have digital I with IDs with the Philippine Post Office will have a will have this app, and they will be able to integrate all other services needed during their uh, their during their digital transformation journey. So I'm going to round up by saying it takes a village to raise a child, and since Philippine open finance is still in its infancy. I'd like to ask everyone here, all of the people who signed the document today, the foreign, uh, the other countries that are working on these projects together, all of the people in this uh, environment, in, in this FinTech Festival, we invite everyone to join us 
uh, as we bring open finance to every Filipino. I'd like, I'd like to do a quick countdown, and if you'll help me, starting with five, four, three, two, one. And with this, I'd like to launch the Philippine Open Finance Foundation, where today we will bring in stakeholders, whether from a technology or use perspective, that if they cannot engage from a technology or finance perspective, because open finance is at its core customer-centric, can help build the policies that will define how open finance will be used in the Philippines. We'd like, with that, I'd like to thank everyone for your time and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Open finance. Thank you very much.